Tonight, a Charlotte family suing an area nursing home alleging their mother died in terrible pain because workers didn't properly administer her medications and then tried to cover it up. A Mecklenburg County investigation revealed this was not an isolated incident at the Brighton Gardens Assisted Living Facility, but a special law giving nursing homes immunity during COVID could prevent the suit from going forward. WCNC defender Michelle Bowden talked exclusively with the family and joins us now with what she uncovered. The family is suing because they say they watched their mother die a horrible death because workers here at Brighton Gardens didn't give her the medication they were supposed to to ease her pain. But that lawsuit could come to a screeching halt because of an emergency statute enacted during COVID. What's so devastating to my sister and, and myself about this is this is how we remember our mother. We can't get this out of our heads. Essentially, we watched her drown. We watched her drown for hours. Ronnie Talon says his mother, Julia Querendongo, drowned in her own secretions. Fluid allowed to build up after this lawsuit claims the team at Brighton Gardens Nursing Home didn't properly administer the medication the 82-year-old was supposed to be getting in her final hours. It should have been peaceful. It should have been loving. And, you know, we were there for her. And it was just a disaster. Yeah. It was a disaster, and it was all because of them. Julia Querendongo was a feisty homemaker with a master's degree who raised two kids, Ronnie and Lisa. She also had a host of health problems for much of her life. My father took care of her and was her, her caretaker for many years. And um, my father got sick a year before my mother did. After he died, the siblings moved their mom to North Carolina to Brighton Gardens, an assisted living facility in South Charlotte. And on Labor Day weekend in 2020, doctors told them the end was near for their mother, and they brought in hospice workers. Hospice told us that they were going to update her medication to help her breathe and help her be more comfortable. Her children never left her bedside that final day. On the last day, we showed up in the afternoon. Um, it was still the day shift, and during the day, they were very attentive. But after 5 o'clock... As time went on, it was like 11 o'clock and all of a sudden Lisa and I looked at each other. And I'm like, where are they? OK, it's we hadn't seen anyone in hours. You could start seeing that my mother's breathing was getting louder and louder and gurgling. And it was like we could hear liquid like bubbling, uh, bubbling up. And she started moaning and thrashing and clawing at her neck. The lawsuit alleges workers at Brighton Gardens didn't give her the medication prescribed meant to control this, saying, quote, the staff failed to provide her with care. It's a memory, you know, I, I wish I didn't have of my mother, you know, looking at me, pleading, reaching out, reaching here, lifting her arms up, and her eyes were just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, it was a pretty helpless feeling. You watched your mother die in this yeah. terrible way. You know, it was horrifying to witness. The siblings say after no one at the facility would help their mom, they called the hospice nurse and asked her to come to the hospital. Together, the three say they confronted the nursing home medication aid. First thing the hospice nurse asked her was, were you giving her her hourly medication? Silence. She never checked the medications that my dying mother was supposed to have. By the time we got back up to the room, she was gone. A Mecklenburg County Department of Social Services investigation found, quote, the facility failed to administer medications in three of five patient cases they looked into, including Julia Quirindago's case. The resulting state-issued adult care home corrective report says because the facility did not administer her prescribed medications, she, quote, endured pain and suffering demonstrated by gurgling and moaning and being fully awake and panicking in the last hours of life. The lawsuit alleges workers tried to cover this up, pointing out facility documentation shows staff administered medicine at 3 a.m., 3.15 and 3.17 a.m. when Julia Corandago would have been unable to swallow any medication because she was, quote, essentially dead. She was officially pronounced dead at 3.20. Also revealed in the county investigation, more medication records the plaintiff's attorney concludes were doctored. In other words, there were there was no medication to provide to Mrs. Crandongo for a couple of days before her death. So they so didn't even have it in house at the facility. They didn't even have it in house and yet they're documenting that they're giving it to her. In a court filing, the facility denied these allegations. We asked the nursing home for comment and received this statement in an email from their parent company, Sunrise Senior Living. It reads in part, 
quote, we cannot comment on specific legal matters. However, we strive to provide the best possible care that we know our residents and families expect from us. We take concerns about the care and safety of our residents very seriously and take prompt appropriate action as needed. Lawyers for the nursing home deny many of the claims in the lawsuit. They've moved to have the case dismissed in part, citing a statute urgently enacted at the start of the pandemic. The nursing home contends this law grants them immunity for deaths during COVID, even though attorneys for the family say Querendago's death had nothing to do with the virus. Because a staff member did not want to check her homework, what she was supposed to do to take care of a patient, my mother had a catastrophic death. A family hoping to keep others from suffering the way they did. Michelle Bowden, WCNC Charlotte. To see more of this defender's investigation, log on to our website, WCNC.com. The story is listed right on our homepage.